Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying delivered his second policy address today with a range of new initiatives introduced. The year's theme is support the needy, let youth flourish, unleash Hong Kong's potential. Let's take a look at some of these policies. The 160 or so new initiatives will add $20 billion to the government's recurrent expenditures. But the chief executive insisted careful planning will do the trick. We do have the financial capability uh, to pay for uh, the measures and initiatives I uh, announced this morning in the uh, policy address, particularly, particularly as we do have very, very good potential to grow an even stronger economy at an even higher rate. Uh, and that will give government the necessary uh, public finance uh, to achieve the targets. These initiatives include a new low-income working family allowance and the incorporation of the elderly health care voucher pilot scheme into the government's regular program, with the amount to be given out doubled to $2,000 a year. There are also plans to purchase residential care places from elderly homes run by Hong Kong non-government organizations on the mainland to provide an option for senior citizens. To help youth flourish, apart from new and increased student subsidies, Leung has announced new initiatives to help ethnic minority students learn better Chinese as a second language. And on housing, the CE has proposed to lift the development moratorium in the Pok Fu Lam area to provide more residential units, including the redevelopment of the old Wafu estate into public rental housing and home ownership scheme flats. Leung reiterated the need to be financially prudent, insisting he'd rather put in place better policies than give people cash handouts. Well, as we mentioned, a large chunk of the chief executive's policy address focused on measures designed to help Hong Kong's working poor. As Stephanie Choi reports, one of the highlights is a new allowance for low-income families. Mr. Wu has tried applying for the government's transport allowance and assistance from the Community Care Fund, but he's rejected every time because he earns slightly more than the maximum limit. I feel so helpless, he says. Mr. Wu lives in this subdivided flat with his wife and daughter. Right now, he isn't eligible for government subsidies, but he thinks even if he was eligible for these subsidies, they wouldn't be enough. Mr. Wu thinks he would be better off if he was given a public housing unit as soon as possible. So that's why the government plans to introduce the low-income working family allowance to help borderline cases like Mr. Wu. According to our initial thinking, a beneficiary family which is not on CSSA must have at least two members with at least one working for a reasonable number of hours to maintain the principle of self-reliance. This is how it'll work. If the family income is the same as or below 50 percent of the median household income and the applicant is a worker who meets the working hour threshold, the family can get a monthly allowance of between $600 and $1,000 depending on the number of hours worked. If the family has kids, it's entitled to an extra $800 a month for each eligible child or youth member. It's expected to cost $3 billion and benefit 200,000 low-income families or 710,000 people. Also, the chief executive announced the government will make another seven community care fund programs more regular, including financial assistance to primary and secondary students and rental help for social welfare beneficiaries. But there was no mention of employers being allowed to dip into workers' mandatory provident fund to pay for severance. <laughs> And as the CE delivered his speech, lawmaker Long Kwok Hong threw eggs in protest over no universal retirement scheme. The chief executive later said a study on various retirement protection schemes will be completed this year. Stephanie Choi, TVB News. The chief executive says the government will adopt a housing target of 470,000 units in the next 10 years. And Wafu Estate in Pokfulan will be developed, generating about 12,000 public housing and subsidized units. Evelina Leung has that story. Last month, I came across a family in Mong Kok. The young couple took a picture of me with their only daughter, who was three years old. I asked them, do you plan to have another baby? And they replied, our flat is too small for two children, uh, Mr. Chief Executive. 
The answer is very typical. Learn used this example to highlight the need to increase housing and land supply. The CE said the government will adopt the long-term housing strategy steering committee's target of providing 470,000 units in the next 10 years. 60 percent of that will be public housing, the rest private. This means developing about 20,000 public rental housing and 8,000 home ownership scheme flats each year in the coming decade, and an estimated 13,600 private units per year in the next five years. Some of these homes will be built on plots that have already been identified. The government has identified about 80 additional Greenbelt sites and government institution or community sites with a total area of over 150 hectares that have the potential to be rezoned for residential use. These plots will be made available in the next five years. Together with the previous sites identified for rezoning, there are about 150 sites that will be rezoned for residential use. That will provide 210,000 units over the next five years. The government will also lift the development moratorium at the south of Park Fu Lam. It will be used to build public housing, and the area close to Wafu Estate will be redeveloped. Also, the government says it favors raising the plot ratio of areas by about 20 percent, except the north of Hong Kong Island and Kowloon Peninsula. One expert, meanwhile, called in to question the overall private-public housing ratio. At this moment, because uh, there is a long queue waiting for the public housing, uh, it is reasonable uh, to have 60 percent, that's more than half uh, of the land uh, uh, distributed to public housing. But in long term, I hope to see uh, more people living in the private sector, then uh, more and more people uh, need to rely on government subsidies. Uh, a political leader uh, shall lead our people uh, to ha be able uh, to uh, pursue their own happiness, not just relying on government. Evelina Lang, TVB News. Lantau is set to become home to one of Hong Kong's core business districts, on par with Central and Kowloon East. The chief executive set up a task force that will develop the island into a gateway economic centre, connecting Hong Kong with the western part of the Pearl River Delta. Gerard de Silva reports. From an outlying island to a major economic district, Leung Chunying has vowed to transform Lantau. It will become a core business district in addition to Central and Kowloon East for promoting economic development and providing job opportunities. With the completion of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge and the Tun Mun Cheplap Kok Road Link, in the coming years, the government says Lantau will become an essential connecting point between the two sides of the delta. The East Lantau metropolis will be based mainly on an artificial island to be built between Lantau and Hong Kong Island, with an area of between 1,400 and 2,000. 400 hectares. Other areas include the 130 hectare artificial island where the Cross Delta Bridge's border control facilities are located. The CE setting up the Lantau Development Advisory Committee to assess development proposals. The Secretary for Development, in collaboration with relevant bureaus, will solicit proposals through committee to capitalize on the benefits brought by major infrastructure projects in the area and the synergy between Hong Kong and the PRD while striking a balance between development and conservation. Hong Kong's third core business district will also serve to accommodate the city's growing population. Juan de Silva, TVB News. Well, senior citizens can expect more medical subsidies from the government. As Vicky Kung reports, the chief executive also promised to buy residential care places from institutions on the mainland to give elderly people on the central waiting list an option. Anticipating some good news, the government today announced plans to double the voucher amount to be given out under the Elderly Health Care Voucher Pilot Scheme to $2,000 a year. And in response to complaints about high dental fees in the city, the authorities promised to launch a regular dental care program for elderly people staying at nursing homes. The $2 per ride concession scheme that applies to the MTR, franchise buses and ferries will also be extended to green top minibuses. 
in order to shorten the waiting time for senior citizens who want to live in nursing homes. The government plans to purchase residential care places at an elderly home in Shenzhen. The center is run by a Hong Kong non-government organization. Senior citizens who are currently on the central waiting list for subsidized long-term care services can request for such places starting in the second quarter. Accepted applicants can then move to the mainland in September. The authorities are also negotiating with another elderly home in Chaoqing for similar arrangements. The plan received mixed reaction. This man says he has no relatives on the mainland, so he doesn't care about going to the mainland. But he says some of his friends may like it because their families can hold reunions there. The elderly commission will also explore the possibility of introducing vouchers for residential care services for senior citizens. The voucher scheme is currently in use in elderly community services. The government plans to set aside $800 million to introduce 3,000 such vouchers next year. The government will also inject $50 million into the Elder Academy Development Foundation. By supporting elders who wish to go back to school, it's hoped that Hong Kong's aging population will enjoy a more active... Vicky Kong, TVB News. On education, the chief executive has outlined plans to boost the teaching of Chinese as a second language to ethnic minority students. The government also unveiled measures to help more youngsters attend university. But as Rani Samtani reports, the education sector lawmaker has accused the administration of not doing enough. Leung Chunying announced plans to inject $200 million a year from the next academic year to help ethnic minority students better learn Chinese. The goal is to facilitate the teaching of Chinese as a second language in both primary and secondary schools. Most South Asian ethnic minority residents call Hong Kong home. To integrate into the community and develop their careers, they must improve their ability to listen to, speak, read and write Chinese. The CE also unveiled plans to increase the number of subsidized final year undergraduate degree places. From 2015, the number will go up by 1,000, so that by 2018, 5,000 associate degree holders will be able to enter subsidized degree programs every year. But the lawmaker representing the education sector instead called for an increase in the number of first-year undergraduate places. They, they break into two parts, and it's not necessary to do so. So I, I think I would prefer uh, the students to enter into uh, degree programs right away. So we should expand the subsidized de de degree sector. If they are qualified to study in universities, I think the government should help them uh, study in university right away. Leung also announced a number of new schemes aimed at helping university students. A mainland university study subsidy scheme will provide grants of up to $15,000 a year to those pursuing higher education at mainland institutions. And a new scholarship program will fund up to 100 outstanding local students to attend top universities outside Hong Kong. As for kindergarten education, the value of vouchers will be increased by $2,500 from the 2014-15 school year for two straight years. In addition, the government plans to set up a vocational education task force to help youngsters plan their future career development. The Education Bureau will provide more career guidance in schools, and at the same time, the business sector will be encouraged to provide more work experience opportunities for students. Rani Samtani, TVB News.